I'm Mike Ryan. You know, turquoise identification can be a real challenge. And throughout our videos here at turquoiseinamerica.com, I've often mentioned that that challenge comes because you can have many different looks from the same mine and the same look from different mines. Still, that problem, that difficulty in turquoise identification has not kept so many people, especially on the turquoise groups on social media, from wanting to ask, what is this turquoise? My grandfather gave this to me. I don't know what it is. Can anybody tell me what it is? And oftentimes, there'll be no shortage of responses. Unfortunately, many times those who are the most certain in their response are the least reliable, and those who I would trust the most to give an accurate identification are often the least inclined to give their opinion. So subjective observation is a difficult way to identify turquoise. Also, I've spent quite a bit of time developing a turquoise grading system, and that is based on the R2 rules of turquoise grading. And there's, there's been a lot of, of pushback from that, most of it coming because, yes, it is a grading system based on subjective observation. And whenever you have that subjective aspect, you're going to have issues of bias and prejudice in the person doing the identification or the grading. Now, in the past, there have been scientific objective means to identify turquoise. And I wanna mention one of those that was included in Turquoise in America Part 1, The Great American Turquoise Rush, 1890 to 1910. Let me read from that. <clears throat> Although it has long been suspected that an extensive turquoise trade existed between Mesoamerica and the American Southwest, scientific proof has only recently been able to support these theories. Building upon the research of Mathian, Harbottle, and Wiegand, and others, new advances in research techniques have demonstrated that the turquoise artifacts in and around Pueblo Benito originated not only from the Cerrillos area, but also from areas of present-day California, Colorado, Nevada, and Arizona. So, uh, I encourage you to read about this. This is a story about the first Great American Turquoise Rush by the ancestral Puebloan. You can read about that in Turquoise in America, Part 1. Unfortunately, the isotope ratio analysis that was used in that study is destructive, and it's very expensive. Uh, there are other means of uh, analysis, and they are also destructive and can be quite expensive. But recently, I was approached by a geologist, Neil Ray, and he had been doing some studies of turquoise on the um, elements, the elements in the turquoise for identification. His challenge was he didn't have a good wide range of test materials. So we got together and I went to Pampa, Texas, and I met with Neil. And uh, I'm going to let him explain a little bit about the testing process that was used in this research. Hello, I'm Neil Ray. I'm here with Mike Ryan. And today we're going to be using X-ray fluorescence to analyze turquoise. And the idea behind this is when we analyze turquoise, we're looking for certain trace elements to create a trace element signature that's going to allow us to identify different mines and then correlate that back to possible braid. And you know something like this has never been done before in the past, uh, and especially in turquoise in America, you'll read part one where they've used isotope analysis, which is very expensive and uh, it's destructive. The great thing about X-ray fluorescence is it's non-destructive. Uh, samples are not damaged in any way, and it's really efficient. So we're hoping to develop this database where we can actually correlate and identify what mines specifically 
uh, that turquoise came from. And we're here, like I said again, at West Texas Analytical Laboratory. That's in Pampa, Texas. And I appreciate Mike bringing an extensive collection of turquoise for us to analyze and compile the results. So we're going to start by analyzing one of the highest, most coveted turquoise there is, Lander Blue. I have a 2.6 carat here of Mike's. And the way this works is it just sets right on top of here in this sample platform. And this platform's tungsten, so it protects from x-rays, it shields it. So we just simply put this down. And then we go over here and we hit start. Through three different cycles. So it'll go through light elements, main elements, and then you know heavy elements. But as you go along, the reading becomes more refined. It's almost, it's almost like a GPS really, you know, the longer you leave it set, the more accurate results. So we have this time set at three minutes. So three minutes really gives us the best possible analysis. So as Neil was explaining, X-ray fluorescence offers some real promise in being able to identify turquoise with a high degree of confidence in the uh, mine identification. And this is a real major advance and it's not expensive and it doesn't destroy the sample. So we have the report out. It is available on the website at turquoiseinamerica.com. You go to the shop under eBooks and it is available there. Now there is a charge for the report. It's quite an extensive report, which we're asking in order to cover some of the expenses of this study. So I hope everybody takes a look at this report. I find it very exciting and really offering a promise for a new means to add an additional tool to subjective observation as a means to accurately identify turquoise.